So if you guys haven't watched the last video, go ahead and click up here and watch the last video. You'll get a better understanding of what's going on. But today we're going to be doing, but we're going to be starting the frame, in frame rebuild of the 4.0 in the Jeep Cherokee. But first, we got to go to Harbor Freight because you know I do things on a budget and get a couple things before we start this uh, job. So let's go ahead and go to Harbor Freight, grab a couple things, and then we'll meet back at the Jeep. So we're out here working on the old Cherokee and uh, I'm gonna show you what I found inside the oil pan. So I went ahead and dropped the oil pan, take a gander up here and I wiggled all the rod bearings, all that good stuff. And as you can see, it almost like everything checks out until we go over here to the oil pan and as you can see good old piston slap and a piston broke so there's the noise so I went ahead and skipped the teardown video because if you've ever put a manifold gasket on these basically tear it down the same you just take your intake off all the stuff off top the valve pan cover um, your power steering pump all that good stuff and then you take your two bolts over there where your ac compressor bolts that's my alternator though i did the all alternator relocation but you just take the two bolts out of the top where the ac bolts and then pop your head off it's pretty self-explanatory um, what i'm going to go ahead and do is take the water pump off take the AC pump bracket off um, the fan and all that good stuff harmonic balancer radiator out um, put a new time and chain in it all that good stuff it's all pretty self-explanatory make sure you take your oil pan off um, it's pretty easy so it's good to take your rod caps off and then take a soft screwdriver handle and then punch it up through after it gets up so far you can pull it right out all right so we got the pistons pulled out and the ones that i want to look at is number five and number six we know what's wrong with number five um, because well busted the whole piston so that's the culprit that's the piston slap that's the stuff in the bottom of the oil pan um, so that piston's pretty much junk, right? So I was looking at the other pistons and, you know, they look good. They have some wear, um, you know, they definitely need replaced. Uh, if you didn't have the money, you know, these would get you by for a while, but I, I definitely recommend replacing these, right? So even though a piston looks pretty decent, you need to really inspect it because if you look close... see that this whole piston is about to bust just like this one did so if you look close the crack there crack here so you're better off to go ahead and replace the pistons because these aren't any good so what I'm doing here is pulling the harmonic balancer with a set of ratchet straps that I got from Harbor Freight. They don't make a good crow's foot puller nowadays to either break or the bolt strip out. So this is the easiest way I've found to remove the harmonic balancer from my 4.0 and it honestly worked out really really well. So I went ahead and took the cover off and I'm going to make sure it, both notches line up. That's how you know you're on top dead center. Pop this bolt loose 
go ahead and change the timing chain set um, while we're here. It'll be the first thing I do so I know I get it back in time. Replacing the front seal is super easy also. Just took a screwdriver, pried it up out of there. Um, you went ahead and cleaned all the gunk out of there. So that's what I went ahead and did. After I cleaned it up, I just took the rag and softly beaded it in there and then tapped it around with a claw hammer. It's light and it doesn't mar it up too bad and I've done this for a long time and this is the way I do it and I never had any problems with the seals leaking and don't forget your time and chain guide mine actually broke and I have to go buy a new one so what I've done here is cut the top of the piston with a grinder cut it in two where it slides off the rod and basically I'm just going to go ahead and press the pin out of the rod. I marked it which side that it came off of. That's the driver's side. And I made a little jig here out of a ball joint pressed um, and a bolt and a washer. And I took a pipe wrench. They're in there pretty good. You could probably heat it up and it come out a little bit easier. I just wanted to see if I could get it out without doing that. And with a little bit of turning and some patience, the pin actually started to come out. So we went ahead and pressed the pins in. Pretty self-explanatory, you get a map torch, tractor supply, heat up your rod till it turns purple, and then slide your pin in and keep your rod straight. And make sure you get your pin even on the outside, on both sides. I have a vise that I could use to hold this piston and put these rings on, but I'm gonna show you I'm going to show you how to put these rings on without a vise or anything. So you're going to have three, three, two, and one. So you want to start with your third one that looks like this. Now when you put this on the piston, you want this groove right here to be facing up towards the piston. So it goes on like this. So you go ahead and put that on like that. Then you go to your third, your other third bag. Grab two of these, these are super thin, and just kind of take it. Uh, it doesn't matter how these go on, it's both the same side. So you just want to go ahead and take it and kind of stretch it like this. Put it on the bottom. Just like that. Then your other one goes on top of this. So you should be left with something like these. This is a big no-no. Slide it around to what's on the other side where my thumb and fingers meet. That way it's not straight through. So you're going to grab number two. 
This is pretty self-explanatory. People buy pliers and stuff to do this with. You don't have to. I'm going to show you the trick that I use. Um, this has a little dot on the top, so that means it goes facing towards the top. And you just want to grab right here and kind of stretch it. Don't go too much because you will bust these rings. So just go to the piston, stretch it. It goes right down in the second groove. You grab your first one. It don't have a notch or a taper to it. So you just go ahead and stick it on. If these make sure they're like away from each other. And make sure your bottom ones aren't lined up with those. crank bearings in is super easy taking them out's easy just loosen up the crank until it's hanging don't take all the caps off just loosen it up spin it and your bearing should come right out as you can see right here putting it in you just push it back around with your fingers and then don't forget to put your bearing on the cap and then put the cap back on so we're going to go ahead and put a couple pistons in this is pretty easy That's basically all you do. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's got two more to put in and we'll be ready to rock and roll underneath and torque everything. The rod bearings aren't that bad. I mean, you can tell they got 200,000 miles on them, but uh, I've seen worse. So we went ahead and got our rod caps on, our rod bearings in, and we went ahead and tightened these down the spec. We got our crank bearings in, all that good stuff. That's something that's super easy to do. This Jeep had a rear main seal pin in it when I first got it. So I'm not gonna replace that. It's not even a year old. But yeah, so the rod bearings, the crank bearings been put in. Uh, I just gotta put the girdle back on. So as you guys seen, I went ahead and put the head on, torqued the bolts, um, all that fancy stuff. Got the water neck on. So we're gonna have to wait to put the water pump on in the time and chain cover because my time and chain guide was broke. It didn't come with the kit that I got. I don't know why. Um, tried to hunt it down at local parts stores, I couldn't. So what I had to do was order it off Amazon. It's not going to be here until next week. So it kind of puts a stop to our build. Um, like I said, this thing was, this engine is so easy to build. It's pretty self-explanatory. That's why I'm not going into super detail about it because it's just pulling the pistons out, putting rod bearings and everything in it. So basically now it's just a waiting game on some parts. Nothing I can do about it. We're so close to getting it running, but uh, like I said, we're waiting on some small little parts that keep this thing from running but i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next time